good morning everybody uh, welcome to today's uh, session in today's session uh, we will look into <clears throat> the high availability of the name node <clears throat> Okay, uh, so uh, we saw the uh, different components of the HDFS and uh, we have uh, one name node and uh, there is a secondary uh, node and uh, also there are uh, uh, multiple nodes and the whole HDFS it works on uh, uh, like one name node and multiple data nodes where the actual data will be stored and no name node will be having the metadata. So if there is any uh, thing goes wrong with the name node, uh, be a hardware uh, problem or a software problem, uh, it is a single point failure. So single point failure means if something happens to the na name node, the whole HDFS uh, system would be uh, down. So in order to make sure that the such scenario doesn't happen, uh, that is taken care uh, using the high, av high availability of the name node. Uh, so uh, in uh, high availability we will be having uh, no, no, not only one name node there will be a standby uh, name nodes those standby name nodes will be uh, capturing the state of the sdfs system whatever is the state as of uh, that particular time it will be cap capturing the state uh, similar to the the uh, the main name node but it will not be uh, active so there will be only one active name node uh, and that active name node will be taking care of all the uh, operations the managing the data nodes um, giving instructions to write the data read the data all those things is done by the the one active name node there could be uh, two or more uh, nodes which are exactly same as the name node their hardware hardware would be uh, similar to the active name node and all the softwares that are available on that uh, active no name node would be same uh, on the standby nodes as well so there will be either two or more name nodes uh, depending upon how big the cluster is and whenever uh, there is a, a failure right the active name node whenever it goes uh, down for some uh, reason then whatever will happen is the standby name node uh, will take care of the uh, the uh, uh, the hdfs cluster so that is how uh, if there is a any problem with a name node a single name node the HD, complete hdfs system will not go down uh, immediately there will be a, a standby name node uh, which will chip in and it will take care of the SDFS system. So <clears throat> earlier name node was a single point of failure that couldn't bring down the entire Hadoop cluster. So uh, single point failure, if there is only one name node and there is uh, uh, no high availability uh, provision, then it's a single point of failure. In order to provide true failure service for name node, name node high availability was implemented as a solution. So name node high availability was implemented uh, to take care of that particular problem. Name node uh, hardware often employed uh, redundant power supply storage guard against such problems. So e even though <clears throat> uh, uh, the name node, name node will be having some kind of a redundant hardware uh, that will, uh, if there is any failure, it will uh, uh, switch to the, the standby hardware. So all those provisions will be uh, taken care in the name node server hardware itself in spite of that there is there could be a, a failure name node high availability cluster has two or more separate name node machines so depending upon uh, what is the size of the cluster there can be uh, two or more than two name nodes each machine is configured with exactly the same software uh, all the standby name nodes will have the same software as that of a main name node or the active name node one in active state and other in the standby state so out of these uh, nodes only one will be active and other others will be in the uh, standby uh, state so this is the uh, the diagram of the high availability hdfs uh, design you can see here we have active name node one active name node is there and we have one standby name node uh, as we know that active na name node will be taking care of a, 
uh, all the operations uh, in the HDFS cluster. So it will be interacting with the uh, data nodes uh, for read and the uh, uh, write operations based on the client request. All those uh, changes, whatever the changes that are uh, happening, those state, those changes will be maintained in the the memory so it is a uh, in in memory metadata which will uh, hold all the information about the the uh, the uh, whatever the metadata what kind of a blocks are there uh, in which nodes um, uh, all those information will be in memory of the active name node that is how whenever there is a, a read or write operation requested from the client it will know exactly to how to get the data which nodes are having that particular data and it will provide that information to the uh, the client and client will uh, directly interact with the data node for the read or the write operations whatever the uh, the current state means whatever has been changes that has been done to the uh, sdfs system those changes will be in the uh, the memory okay memory of the active node that information will be that is sdfs state uh, information will be shared with the quorum of nodes so these are called as a, a journal nodes journal nodes will be having the all the uh, information about all the changes that are ta taken place or taking place so constantly active node will be pushing those changes those that uh, metadata information will be uh, will be getting pushed to the journal node and normally we don't have a one journal node there will be <clears throat> at least two to uh, three journal nodes again it is to take care of the uh, same single point failure suppose let us say uh, we have only one journal node and this active node has given all the uh, the current state information into the uh, journal node and uh, let us say active node goes down and also at the same time journal node goes down now if that is the situation again the standby uh, standby name node will have the current information so it will um, again it's a failure situation so that is the reason we will be having a, a, a two to three journal nodes which have the the current state of the active node HD, about the hdfs system and standby node will constantly read those states and it will make sure that the whatever the uh, state maintained by the active node it is exactly same uh, in the standby no standby name node as well the standby name node reads edits from the journal and also acts like a, a checkpoint node so we have already seen the checkpoint node checkpoint node uh, is or also it is called as a, a secondary name node uh, it will be acting like a kind of a, a backup in case of the uh, the uh, name node goes down it will have the current state and uh, also uh, you can see the active name node will be uh, uh, getting the report from the all the data nodes and also the name node uh, data nodes will report to the standby name node as well so whatever is the changes that is happening it will uh, that report whatever the block information report will go to the active node as well as the standby name node but whatever the uh, changes or actions to be taken care uh, by the data node will be uh, done from the active no name node so for, from data node perspective uh, it will take orders from only one active node so for other uh, standby name nodes it will provide the report of the whatever the current state so uh, uh, data nodes report to both name nodes but only take orders from the active one so it will take orders from only one active node but it will provide the uh, report to all the standby uh, name nodes so that they can maintain their uh, uh, hdfs current state okay active na name node responsible for all client hdfs operation in the cluster we uh, previously saw like how the read and write operations uh, take care, uh, uh, happens in hdfs system uh, so all the uh, client request whatever the client wants to perform read or write operations uh, those will be uh, taken care by the active name node okay the standby name node will not uh, interact with the client the active name node is the one which will take all the uh, request from the client standby name node maintains enough state to provide fast failure if required 
okay uh, the job of the standby name nodes is to maintain the the uh, current state as much as possible uh, like uh, if if there is any kind of a, a failure um, whatever the uh, reads that are left uh, from the journal uh, node it will read and it will uh, uh, become a active node active name node that is how it will make sure that there is a, a switch over from the failed name node to the standby name node both the name nodes receive block reports from the data nodes in order to guarantee the file system state is preserved so uh, data nodes uh, provide report about the all the changes to both the uh, active as well as the standby name nodes so that they can preserve the uh, the current state of the hdfs file system active node also sends file system edits to quorum of journal nodes so uh, whatever the uh, act, uh, uh, whatever the edits that happen uh, will be sent to the the uh, journal nodes quorum of journal nodes so that they will also maintain the those changes the standby node continuously reads the edit from the journal nodes in order to ensure its namespace is synchronized with that of the active node so standby node uh, nodes uh, if there are more than two they will continuously read from the journal nodes for the edits and make sure that their namespace is synchronized with the active name node so uh, whenever the failure happens so with the minimum uh, uh, time it will uh, uh, bring up uh, itself so that it will become an active node and hdfs will not see any kind of a failure when active name node fails standby node reads all the remaining edits from the journal nodes before promoting itself to active state so when active node fails first what it will do is uh, whatever is the remaining edits okay uh, it will read from the journal nodes and once it completes all the reads from the uh, uh, journal node uh, then it will change itself to become a active node active name node so secondary name node is not required in the h high availability configuration we have seen this when we had the uh, architecture or the hdfs cluster where there was only one name node we uh, had to have add a, a secondary name node okay uh, so that the file uh, hdfs uh, state is maintained in the secondary name, name node it, it was kind of a, a backup in case of a uh, ha configuration that is high availability configuration there is no requirement of a, a secondary name node because standby name node itself they will uh, uh, work as a, a checkpoint as well as a backup okay so apache zookeeper monitors the name node health so zookeeper is the uh, the service that runs on the uh, hdfs uh, uh, cluster and this zookeeper will make sure that this is the one which is responsible for uh, checking the health of the active name node and making the whenever there is a failure making the transition uh, from the failed node to the standby node that is the job of the uh, zookeeper zookeeper continuously monitors the uh, health of the name nodes zookeeper is a highly available service uh, for maintaining a small amount of uh, coordination data notifying clients of the changes in the data uh, monitoring clients for failure so uh, it uh, it checks the health of the name nodes and it needs for uh, doing that it needs a, a very mi minimal data uh, for doing the coordination uh, let us say if there is a, any a change in the a name node means if there is a active name node goes down and a uh, another standby name node uh, brings up that particular information will be notified to the clients because clients are the one they are act, uh, acting with the uh, uh, interacting with the uh, 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 active name nodes so if there is change in the active name node the clients uh, should be notified and monitoring clients for the failure suppose if the client uh, uh, fails uh, it, it will do the monitoring of those things also hdfs failover relies on zookeeper for failure detection and for standby to active uh, name node election so uh, zookeeper is the one which is responsible 
uh, for uh, checking the name nodes and if there is a any failure uh, the fail failover uh, to the uh, uh, from the uh, uh, the failed server to the uh, standby server it is the responsibility of the zookeeper and also out of uh, so if there are more than two uh, uh, standby name nodes which name node will be selected to become active that uh, particular selection is done by the zookeeper hdfs name node federation so uh, first initially we saw there was a, uh, a cluster with only single name node and the, so that uh, posed a, um, uh, a threat of having a single point failure then it was moved to uh, HDFS uh, high availability um, uh, configuration. In case of a HDFS high availability configuration, we will have uh, redundant uh, name nodes uh, or standby nodes. In case of in case of any kind of a, a failure, those standby uh, nodes will become the active nodes. That is how it will uh, make sure that the HDFS cluster is working without any uh, problems. So in case of a HDFS uh, name node federation, uh, we uh, earlier we had only one single space, okay, namespace. All the, whether it is a, a single name node or whether we had the high availability configuration, the uh, namespace was only one and that namespace was completely managed by a, a single name node. Okay, so in case of uh, uh, whichever is the active no name node, that will manage the complete namespace. So uh, that will pose some kind of a, a problems uh, related to the performance. So then they came up with the idea of a name node federation, where we, there will be a multiple name nodes taking care of multiple namespaces. Okay, so we, the, 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 the the setup would be uh, similar to high, av high availability, but there will be uh, multiple active name nodes taking care of a different namespaces and they will be interacting with uh, all the data nodes in the uh, 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 in the cluster. So in a similar fashion compared to the single name node. Older version HDFS provided a single namespace for entire cluster managed by the single name node. That is the uh, older version. Uh, so resources of a single name node determine the size of the whole namespace. So whatever the uh, resources that are available with the uh, single name node, it will determine the what would be the size of the namespace. Federation addresses this limitation by adding support for multiple name nodes or namespace to HDFS file system. With the uh, name node federation, that particular limitation of having a namespace which is uh, limited by the resources uh, of the uh, one particular name node is uh, that limitation has been uh, uh, removed by having a, a federation of uh, name node or the name node uh, spaces, namespaces, so that uh, there are multiple uh, name node uh, uh, in the cluster and they will be taking care of the different namespaces. These are the benefits of the HDFS name node federation. Uh, first one is the namespace scalability. Now, <clears throat> with the earlier setup, uh, the size of the uh, uh, the size of the the, the cluster is uh, limited by the the resources that are available for the name node uh, in with that scaling up would be difficult if there is a tomorrow we have a requirement to have a, a much uh, larger cluster to support uh, uh, the bigger uh, uh, file system then scaling up would be very difficult because we have only one uh, name node and adding many more uh, data nodes on top of that would be very difficult. So that particular problem is solved using the name node federation where we can easily scale up or scale down. Better for performance because we have separate name nodes which are taking care of a separate namespaces okay which do not interact with each other the two name nodes uh, which are managing two different namespaces they will not interact with each other they will only interact with the the all the data nodes and the clusters so that is how uh, because there is a more number of name nodes 
the performance of the uh, whole HDFS ecosystem would be much better. And system isolation, system isolation is what? Uh, where uh, the two name nodes taking care of a different uh, namespaces, they will not interact with each other. So this is the example of a, a name node federation. So we have here the, in this particular example, uh, two name nodes, name node one, and uh, this is the namespace with namespace one, and we have name node two with uh, namespace two. So these, excuse me. So these uh, two name nodes, uh, they will be interacting with the, all the data nodes in the cluster. Okay, and uh, but these name nodes will not interact with each other. So the whatever the data that is uh, stored by the name nodes and name node one and the name node two, that would be on all these data nodes. So it will uh, know uh, which are the data nodes exactly same as the uh, earlier. Only thing is there are multiple name nodes and they are keeping a a copy on the same set of data nodes. HDFS uh, checkpoints and the backups. HDFS uh, uh, backup node maintains an up-to-date copy of the file system namespace both in memory and on disk. So we have a, a, a backup node uh, which will maintain uh, up-to-date uh, copy of the uh, file system. That is the whatever the current state of the uh, file system uh, for each of the uh, namespaces, uh, it will keep both in the memory as well as on disk. On disk means it will be having uh, in the uh, file. That is the FS image file that we have seen. So in case of a uh, uh, any problem with a, uh, let us say backup uh, node goes down for some reason, then if the state is only maintained in the uh, memory, then we will lose that particular information. So that is the reason the copy is maintained both in the memory and uh, on disk. So uh, worst case, if backup is needed, uh, uh, like we will get it from the disk. So the best case scenario, backup is required. We can directly get it from the uh, memory of the backup node, which is much faster than getting it from the disk. Since it has an up-to-date namespace state in memory, uh, it need not download the FS image and edit the uh, files from the active name, name node. So <clears throat> here, the uh, up-to-date namespace information is maintained in the uh, memory. So it doesn't have to uh, uh, download the FS image from the uh, active node and uh, look into the edit files and uh, merge those and maintain the current uh, 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 current state. So that is not required if we have a, a backup node. A name node supports one backup node at a time. OK, so uh, for every name node that is in the cluster, uh, it can uh, have a one backup. So each name node su will support one backup node at a time. So whatever is the uh, uh, state, uh, whatever is the state of the file system in the name node, same copy will be in the, the memory of the backup node as well as a, a, a physical copy will be stored on the backup node. No checkpoint nodes may be registered if backup node is in use. So. Earlier we have seen we have we had a check a checkpoint node. So checkpoint node will uh, constantly look into the active node. It will copy the FS image and edit files, merge it, put it back to the. So if we have a backup node, there is no need for the a checkpoint node. HDFS snapshots. First of all, what is a snap? A snapshot is a, uh, uh, as we saw in the uh, earlier slide, we have a, a backup node. Backup node is always it is making sure that uh, whatever is the current state, it is maintained. So that particular backup will be always there. In spite of having that, if there is a, a requirement to uh, take the snapshot at particular point that can be done. So snapshot is the nothing but a, it is a state at a particular point of time. If you and if there is any need where you want to capture the state of the uh, Hadoop file system at particular time that can be <clears throat> done using the uh, uh, Hadoop uh, snapshots. These are created by administrator using 
uh, hdfs dfs uh, dash snapshot command so this is the command that can be used so hdfs uh, space dfs hyphen snapshot whenever you issue this command uh, a snapshot of uh, the hdfs at that particular time will be uh, take will be taken they are read only point in time copies of the file system so these are read only point in time copies as and when you take uh, the uh, uh, the snapshot at but that particular time whatever is the state that will be ca captured okay so these are the uh, different features offered by the snapshot snapshot can be taken uh, of a subtree of the file system or entire file system so uh, in case of a a backup node always we have the the backup of the entire file system but in case of a snapshot uh, if you choose to take just only one subtree of the complete file system you can do that so either you can do uh, some uh, subsystem of the complete file system or the entire file system so snapshot can be taken at any level it can be used for data backup protection against uh, user errors and disaster recovery so what is the uh, use of taking the snapshots is uh, snapshots can be uh, this can be taken as a, a data backup for a regular uh, maintenance purpose you can take a uh, uh, backup and protection against user errors let us say uh, because of a user intervention uh, let us say you are having a hdfs uh, system and you want to give it to the user uh, for let's say testing purpose and uh, because of the certain user uh, actions it might lead to some errors in the hdfs system and uh, we might lose the valuable information so before giving it to the user we can take a backup and then it can be given to the user if uh, there is no uh, problem with the a uh, user action that is fine let us say if there is any ac a problem with the user action or the uh, errors uh, then we can restore it back with the uh, backup whatever the backup we have taken before giving to the users we can restore the uh, system using that backup uh, that is how the snapshot will be uh, useful and disaster recovery so disaster recovery uh, uh, every system uh, needs to have a, a disaster recovery policy the disaster recovery is like when you have a huge system and there can be uh, any kind of a uh, uh, disasters how we recover from those disasters like let us say uh, you have to build the system from the scratch so that is uh, the disaster recovery whenever um, uh, this is the disaster recovery is the capability uh, from building the huge system from the scratch so so it is helps with the disaster recovery snapshot creation is instantaneous so it is uh, with respect to that particular time so instantaneous means uh, whenever you are taking whenever you are issuing the snapshot command at that instant it will take a, a snapshot snap snapshot files record block list and the file size so whatever is the block list and the file size all those things will be recorded and snapshot do not adversely affect the regular hdfs uh, operations so whenever we are uh, taking a snapshot it will not affect the whatever the regular operations of the hdfs system hdfs uh, nfs gateway so network file system gateway uh, uh, it supports uh, nfs v3 and enables hdfs to be mounted as part of the client's local file system so uh, uh, th this particular uh, um, uh, support it will uh, help uh, to be mounted as a part of a, a client local file system whichever the local file system we have uh, maybe we might have unix or uh, windows whichever local file system uh, it can be mounted as part of that the f uh, feature uh, uh, offers users the following capability users can easily download or upload file from the uh, from or to hdfs file system uh, to or from their local file system so uh, it will be mounted on the local file system so it will be very easily you can uh, do any kind of a, a download or upload from the hdfs uh, file system either uh, you can 
copied from the local to the um, HDFS, from HDFS to the local. Users can uh, stream data directly to the HDFS through the mount point. So if there is a, any uh, need, the uh, data can be streamed to the uh, HDFS through the that particular mount point. Let me show you the local uh, file system. Okay. Let me... <clears throat> I will start the SSH session. Let me open here. So already uh, HDFS is uh, running on my system. And I will open the SSH session. Okay, uh, user is root and then it prompts for the password. Eight, three, four data, that is my password. Now it has uh, logged in. So uh, what is the local system is, what we have is, if you say this ls minus LTR, it will show the local file system. So what you can see here is the a local file system and it is, it is listing uh, all the uh, files. and uh, the HDFS file system, if you want to see, you will say HDFS uh, DFS minus LS. Okay, I'm going to uh, list the current directory of the HDFS. It will take a little bit time. So what when I issued the command ls minus ltr, uh, whatever the files uh, are present in the local file system, that local file system files are listed here. You can see there are like uh, uh, three files. Uh, this is the permission. Uh, this is the user. So if you see, uh, I logged in with the uh, root user. And these files are created with the root user. And this is the size. And these are the names of the files this is the date when these files are created now i want to seize the sdfs uh, uh, system uh, and i want to list all the files that are uh, available in the hdfs so for that i will issue a command hdfs space dfs distributed file system space hyphen then command then we we uh, uh, have many commands that can be uh, used we will see those uh, commands uh, in uh, uh, in uh, later session, uh, there are many commands. Uh, we will see most uh, useful commands. So this particular ls will list the local file system. Now you can see here it has listed the file system. Uh, so there are a couple more files that are there. <clears throat> these are the directories, and we have these are the two files. And you can see here this is the STFS. So HDFS system. In HDFS, we have these files. And in local uh, file system, we have these files. So what we can do is, uh, if, if required, we can copy the local file into the HDFS, or HDFS files can be brought into the uh, local system. <clears throat> or if you want to create um, uh, HDFS copies inside the HDFS system, we can do that as well. So users can stream data directly to HDFS through the mount point. So this is the first file. User can easily download, upload fi files from to the HDFS file system to 
uh, from their local file system. So between the local file system and the SDFS file system, you can copy from here to there or from there to here. Any uh, kind of a download or upload can be done. <clears throat> so next we will see the uh, the Hadoop uh, uh, HDFS commands and uh, uh, we are uh, there are many uh, commands that, that are available uh, we will just list them we will go through all the HDFS uh, uh, commands but the most important ones we will try to work out uh, we will see uh, if uh, some of the commands can be uh, executed already I have executed those commands uh, and uh, because it takes uh, more time and uh, uh, being in the session and issuing these commands, uh, it will take more time. I have a snapshot of already uh, whichever I could able to execute all those commands information. I already have it in uh, uh, taken as a snapshot and we will try to see if some of the simple uh, commands can be executed live in this particular session. For example, uh, we did this listing of the files. This is one of the command. Okay. Uh, so this command uh, structure goes as HDFS space DFS. Then uh, if optionally you can have a configurational information, then hyphen, then actual command. So in this uh, case, the actual command is the LS, which is the listing of the the files in the HDFS. So the listing will display all the files, their permissions, their size, when they were created, all those information will be shown by the this particular command. So which are the most uh, important commands uh, that we will see is the uh, version. So version, if you want to uh, see here, I will say HDFS space version click enter so all the HDFS commands it is going to take a little bit of a time uh, and uh, if your uh, system uh, is having a, a good uh, size of the uh, RAM then these commands will really work fast now you can see HDFS version command we have a Hadoop version 3.1.1 this is the version this is the complete version number that we have Okay, and uh, apart from other information, it will display. And uh, we have make directory mkdir. Uh, then make directory using make directory, we can create a, a new directory in the HDFS. Uh, ls already be executed. Um, ls will you can list all the files in a, a particular directory. So as of now, uh, I did it in the current directory. I, I will show you how to do it in the other directory as well put so what the put command will do is if you have any file in the uh, local file system that you can put it in the HDFS uh, file system so uh, put command will move a, a copy a, a local file a local system file into HDFS uh, file system so using put command we can do that copy from local so there is a, another command it will is exactly uh, similar to put copy from local what it will do is it will copy a file from the local file system into hdfs file system get get as the name suggests it will get a, a file from the hdfs file system and it will get into the local file system copy to local again similar to get it will get the whatever the file you want to have from the HDFS file system, it can copy into your current local file system. A cat uh, similar to uh, this is all all these are like if you are aware of the Unix commands, they are exactly same as that cat. If you want to see any uh, file, you want to see what is the content of the file, you can use the a cat command and MV is the move command. If you want to move a particular file uh, within a HDFS system, then you can use the move command. Suppose you want to move a particular file from one folder to another folder, you can use the move command. And copy command. If you want to make a, a copy of a HDFS file into uh, HDFS uh, file system, okay, 
uh, this is the copy command can be used creating a copy of a file in a HDFS file system. So it is not from local to HDFS. This is within HDFS. Within HDFS, you want to make a, a copy of the file. You can use the a copy of the uh, CP command. So these are the most important commands. And uh, <clears throat> in the uh, next session, uh, we will uh, uh, work out some of these uh, commands and we'll see how, how it will uh, execute.